Welcome back. As promised, let's go to the management of Godrej Consumer. The stock's under a tad bit of pressure after reporting an inline set of the third quarter's uh, numbers. We had flat uh, domestic volume growth at the same time. We did see some improvement sequentially on gross margins, but year on year they have been lower by 500 basis points. So, Sudhir Sitapati, the newly appointed MD and CEO of the company, now joins in for his first interaction with the media. Thank you, Sudhir, for joining in and living up to your promise as well. Let's start with uh, two most important things that all FMCG companies are currently facing right now. On uh, the top line end, there is some rural slowdown, there is tightness in consumer sentiment and on the bottom line, there is inflation in raw materials as well. What have you witnessed so far and what can you guide for in the future? I think these are related issues, Mangalam. I think the, there's a, definitely a slowdown in the market uh, sequentially in terms of volume growth, though value growths uh, look fine for most companies. And I think the primary reason for this is the hyperinflation that we're facing in commodities. So, uh, you know, the last time we saw this kind of hyperinflation, and even then it wasn't as much as now, uh, we saw a very sharp fall in volume for a few quarters before it starts picking up. So I guess uh, the prognosis is that volume growth will be under pressure, uh, both for GCPL and I suspect for uh, many consumer uh, uh, businesses for the next, you know, Till for a, for a few quarters in any case. Okay. All right. Uh, Sudhir, uh, give us a breakup of your various verticals. What do, what's the outlook from year on? Household insecticides, soaps, as well as hair colors. A rough number for each of these segments. What is the growth projections? I think the, 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 the truth has been that across categories and across continents, while the value growth has varied quite a lot based on pricing, volume growth has roughly been in the uh, ballpark of uh, where where uh, of, of everything else. So they've all been relatively low uh, volume growths. Uh, and especially when you look at it on a two-year basis, of course, volume growth are a bit better. But I would say uh, reasonably consistent uh, results across uh, geographies and businesses. I think two businesses that are making us quite happy are our Africa business is doing well. India personal care is doing well. Two businesses that we've got to look at a little bit more carefully are our Indonesia business and our household insecticide business in India, I think is still an unsolved problem and we've got to get that category back onto much faster growth than it's growing right now. All right, Sudhir, you said that volume growth will be under pressure for GCPL and the, the sector for the next couple of quarters. Are we likely to see negative terrain coming anytime soon? Because, you know, the next quarter you go into a high volume base of 29%. So on that, it would uh, turn out to be negative perhaps. It could be, uh, Mangalam, I, I mean, I, I see if you take underlying volume, which mm -hmm. is a steady, right, because you ignore, you know, ups and downs of quarters. Uh, what typically happens with hyperinflation is that immediately pipelines thin down. So inventory thins down. And I think that's happened now. So I do think there'll be structural volume improvement uh, a little bit by little. Optically, you know, it will vary depending on, on bases and competitors and so on and so forth. It's true that in quarter one of... Uh, this uh, financial year, we had a very high uh, branded volume growth. Mm. Seems the market is listening to you, Sudhir, and they'll want to hear more. Uh, so give us a few more details then. Your gross margins, well, uh, you know, they have improved sequentially at least. Have they bottomed out? And the other factor that I wanted to ask you is uh, ad spends as a percentage of sales. Uh, you know, what is it likely to be? Yeah, I think these strategically... You know, the, the, the objective of the company, you know, volatility aside, a few quarters aside, is to develop the categories that we're present in. And that's going to require significant support in terms of both advertising and in terms of distribution. So we've got to invest in, in this. And I think that's really important. I think, I mean, unless there is significant further hyperinflation from where we are today, which is possible, but perhaps not likely, but it's possible, I, I feel like uh, gross margins will sequentially improve as they've improved this quarter. Some part of it we will reinvest and some part of it we'll pass back uh, on to EBITDA. So what does that mean in terms of EBITDA margins going forward for you? Uh, I, I feel like the EBITDA margins will see, you know, it's not proper for me to give exact numbers, but I will see medium, uh, medium uh, recovery, you know, mid-ranging mid recovery. Uh, is what I, I anticipate in EBITDA margins in the next few quarters. How long before Indonesia starts to see growth and will Africa and others continue to see the momentum that they have seen this quarter? I, I feel like the Africa business is on a good wicket and I, I, I think it will continue to do well. Uh, and I think many of those reasons are structural. 
I think some of the Indonesian reasons uh, for Indonesia not performing very well are uh, to do with the macroeconomics, but also to do with, you know, COVID. So we have a very large hygiene portfolio in our COVID comparator. It will be a few quarters before I think Indonesia returns to growth. Okay, all right. You're expecting Africa to continue to uh, improve and Africa really has grown quite well. I think 13.5% in the past quarter. But margins are a little under pressure in Africa. Expected to improve from here? Margins are under pressure everywhere because, you know, three big feedstocks for our business are, uh, you know, oil prices, wedge oil and tin. All these are under pressure. But but uh, I anticipate uh, margin improving uh, in, uh, in the next few quarters in Africa as well, sequentially in any case. All right. Final question, Sudhir, then, because it's your first interview to us, let's uh, take it to a little longer term. You had highlighted, you know, a double digit sort of volume growth strategy in the medium term in your first presentation that you made with about a 150 to 200 basis points margin improvement as well over the next two to three years. Let's look at GCPL, say, three years from now where you are well entrenched in the business. All the processes are well defined. What would the revenue composition of the company look like, both category wise as well as geography wise? And uh, any new categories that you're looking to enter? Margins, what would they look like, say, three to five years from now? Look, I think our ambition for a portfolio that GCPL has is in the very high single digits or, you know, touching aspirationally double digit volume. So that, that ambition and aspiration continues and notwithstanding the short term volume pressure we're doing, I, I feel the portfolio will deliver it. I think bulk of these growths will come from three categories. Household insecticide, our biggest one, a hair color, which is very profitable. And our air care business, which is relatively small in India, in any case today, it's quite big in Indonesia, but I think which has potential for explosive growth. I think these are the three categories that will contribute to bulk of the volume growth. All right, so the pleasure speaking with you. We will monitor the developments in your company under your helm as well as we move on. But the street does not like the fact that uh, volume growth will be slightly muted for Godrej Consumer mm. and the FMCG spec uh, space over the next uh, couple of quarters. Yeah, I don't know. We still have Sudhir with us, but irrespective of how the quarter four is going to shape up, mm. we have a date with you, Sudhir, uh, at the end of the quarter four numbers. Sudhir, you're joining us uh, after quarter four as well, right? Done. Done. All it. right. So now we have your promise on record. Thank you so much for joining and take care. Uh, with that, we wind down on this edition of Chartbusters. But as we do that, here's something.